Hey guys, what's up? It's Aidman Eric. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about something. Drugs. Nah, I'm just kidding. The Nintendo Switch is kicking it. Great 2017 and tons of games on it. There are hundreds upon hundreds of games available in the eShop. Christmas just ended. I'm sure you got one of those fancy little eShop cards or some extra cash and a brand new Nintendo Switch that you might have gotten for Christmas. And you're thinking, huh. If only I knew what the best games I can get out there are. Well, au contraire, Morfier. I don't know my French, but today I'm actually going to talk to you about 10 Nintendo eShop games that you can get that are under 20 bucks each. And these are some of the best games in the eShop. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and begin today's video. So coming in first is actually a one of the best indie games I've played in quite some time, Shovel Knight. Now Shovel Knight is actually available two different ways. You can get Shovel Knight by itself or you can get Shovel Knight Treasure Trove which comes with all of the iterations of Shovel Knight DLC included but that's way more than 20. If you get just plain old Shovel Knight it's less than 20 bucks and it's well worth it. This is a great game. It plays a lot like one of those classic NES platformers such as DuckTales. We got the comparison with the pogo stick that you can go down with using the shovel. It also has a little bit of Mega Man type of vibe to it. Overall, it's just a wonderful game. The graphics, super retro fantastic. The gameplay is solid as ever. He even has a freaking amiibo. The Switch edition does have an exclusive co-op edition and it's great this is a really 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 fantastically made game not enough people talk about it because it's been out for quite some time however i believe this is truly one of the best games on the nintendo switch and is a must own and it's under 20 bucks you can't go wrong next up we got a pretty cute and quaint little game overcooked special edition this is one of the best multiplayer games available on the switch the premise of Overcooked is that you take control of a kitchen with other players and each of you have to prepare a certain amount of dishes within a certain amount of time. Sounds as easy as it sounds, right? Well, you're wrong. Basically, orders come and go within a certain amount of time limit. Fires start, there's stage obstacles, there's, you know, somebody has to wash dishes, somebody has to chop, somebody has to do this. Sometimes you're separated in the kitchen. There's a lot of chaos, but this is what multiplayer games are meant to be and on the switch i think it fits at home especially because you could each use a joy con it's perfect i think overcooked is actually a pretty good hidden little gem that i really don't hear anybody talk about across all of the platforms i played this on ps4 and i've also played it on the switch it's a blast this is the perfect party game if you have a group of friends over and you want to play some games throw in overcooked but beware I'm quite certain that your friends won't be your friends much longer after yelling at each other. Give me the damn hamburger patty. All right, well, give me the cabbage. Oh, well, then make the soup. Oh, well, cut the onion. It's complete chaos, and that is what makes this game completely wonderful. You're going to fall in love with it. I fell in love with Overcooked, and it's one of my favorite games, seriously. And, of course, under 20 bucks. Can't go wrong. Sign of 8-Bit Eric approval right there. The seal of 8-Bit. Now this one actually is one that I played on Steam quite a bit ago. It's been basically on PS4 and other consoles, Wii U. Now it is on the Nintendo Switch. It took it quite a while though. Axiom Verge. Now this is a Metroid clone. I know people really enjoy the Metroid series. I'm not such a big fan of Metroid. I do like Super Metroid though, and Axiom Verge captures that atmosphere, gameplay, and solid foundation that Super Metroid had on the Super Nintendo. You play as a scientist who basically has to find out what the hell is going on. He wakes up in a mysterious area. There's like glitches and a lot of maze-like paths that you can take. You have to get weapons, and it just has a real nice soundtrack. And what's beautiful about this is that one person made this game this is a one-man crew that developed axiom verge and it's one of the most solid metroidvania games out there period it's a very solid game it's a lot of fun it kept me 
captivated by it. And this is coming from somebody that doesn't really enjoy Metroid at all. This one was a good clone of it. It's one of the better games out there, independent-wise, all around. And now that it's on the Switch, there's absolutely no reason why it's not in your library. Now, there is a physical version of Axiom, Axiom Verge for $39.99. But if you download it from the eShop, you can get it for under $20, bucks, which is not a bad deal at all, unless you really want to get physical games. Now, Mega Man is one of the cl most classic franchises out there. I love it. It's coming to the Nintendo Switch. Mega Man 11 pretty soon, but did you know that you can get your Mega Man fix right now for under 20 bucks in the eShop with Mighty Gun Vault Burst? Now, I covered this game a while back, and I was actually quite surprised. A lot of people did say it was a little bit mediocre, but for me, it had everything that I wanted. Mega Man-like bosses, Mega Man-like stages, Mega Man-like weapons, and it has that real cool retro-style gameplay that just reminds me a lot of Mega Man. I mean... Basically, this is like an 8-bit Mighty Number no. 9. Has a lot of DLC in it, too, that is free and included. You can play as a different variety of characters. And I just had an overall blast upgrading my weapons and playing through these stages. It kept my attention quite a bit. And for the price that it's asking for, it's well worth it. it it's a very solid game and a lot of fun to play. If you haven't tried Mighty Gun Vault Burst, it is hiding in the eShop, but it shouldn't be hiding. It should be in your Nintendo Switch collection. Trust me, you're gonna like it. And yeah, seal of approval. Sonic the Hedgehog is back. He had not one, but two Nintendo Switch games. We had Sonic Forces, but that one is way over 20 bucks. But in the eShop, you can get Sonic Mania. Didn't come out physically on the Switch, so the only way you can get it is through the eShop. And it is a callback to the classic Sonic the Hedgehog Sega Genesis games. Sonic Mania is like the ultimate fan service for Sonic the Hedgehog. It features callbacks to the original games with revisits and remixes of some of these original stages like Green Hill Zone and Chemical Plant Zone. And it also features a lot of neat little gameplay mechanics that were never before in the original Sonic games. And overall, it feels like this is the Sonic the Hedgehog that we should have had a long time ago. If you're a big Sonic fan, there's absolutely no reason why you haven't played this yet. It's a great game. I had a lot of fun playing it, and it made me feel like I was a seven-year-old kid again. It's Sonic for under 20 bucks in the Nintendo eShop. It's a lot of joy to play. I mean, what more can I say? If you liked Sonic 1 and 2 on the Sega Genesis and Knuckles in 3, you're going to enjoy Sonic Mania. I mean, it's... it's Muy magnifique. Coming up is a game that was also ported onto basically everything before the Nintendo Switch. This is Retro City Rampage DX. It's an 8-bit, I guess, crime game. Kind of like uh, an 8-bit GTA. I know a lot of people compare it to that. But basically, you're in a city. You play as a character that goes back in time. And you have to fix, um, I guess, a parody of Emmett Brown from Back to the Future's Time Machine and you do several different missions. You can explore, you can cause chaos, you can shoot people, you can run them over. This game is like the ultimate little 8-bit sandbox mini GTA game and it is quite addictive. I played it on PS4 and Steam when it first came out. I know it's also on 3DS, it's also on basically everything and i think it didn't come out on wii u but it's such a great and wonderful little game there's a lot of callbacks to classic nes games like ninja turtles there's mario references there's Mega Man references this is like a bobo's big adventure but with like gta all in one this was such a fun game that's not meant to be taken seriously and if you're a gamer and you love retro gaming retro city rampage dx is the way to go there is Two different physical versions. There's a collector's version and a standard version, but they're not 20 bucks. If you get the download on the eShop, $20. Make you holler. It's well worth it. Now, growing up playing on the NES, one of my favorite games was Maniac Mansion. I really enjoyed that point and click adventure type of gameplay that a lot of these Lucas Arts games had back in the 80s. And when Thimbleweed Park was announced to be coming on the Switch, I shat my pants. Thimbleweed Park is a great callback to games like Day of the Tentacle and Maniac Mansion. You play as a set group of people, a couple of detectives, a clown, and a nerdy chick, and even a ghost, 
and you explore Thimbleweed Park. There's a mystery going on, but that's kind of like just the starting phase of what actually is going on. It has a creepy vibe. The atmosphere is there. There's a lot of puzzles, a lot of classic point and click PC gaming experience that I feel is perfect for the Switch. It uses the touch screen rather well. I had a lot of fun playing it and it was actually quite humorous and honestly it surprised me. I knew it was going to be good when I saw the trailer but when I finally got my hands on it, popped it in and played it, I was like wow. This game is easily one of the most underrated games on the Switch. I know I'm saying that with a lot of these games on here, but I'm serious. This is one must-have title, if you, especially if you grew up playing games like this. Thimbleweed Park is definitely one that you need to check out. I highly, highly recommend it. So good. So good. <laughs> Yet again, another indie game that came across pretty much everything in recent years, and it's finally been poured over to a Nintendo system, Stardew Valley. This is a game that is basically inspired by games like Harvest Moon, where you control a farm, you have to manage it, get livestock, grow crops, date a woman, possibly marry her. Time passes, there's a strategy of energy usage in here. Basically, the sky's the limit in Stardew Valley, actually. You can do almost anything you want. You want to play on the farm, go for it. If you want to be a womanizer, go for it. If you want to go in the caves and battle enemies and do all sorts of crazy stuff, you're welcome to. Stardew Valley is a game about whatever you want. It's literally like you're living a second life. And actually, I enjoyed a lot better than Harvest Moon. I know a lot of Harvest Moon fans are going to basically be like, what do you mean, man? It's such, you know, Harvest Moon is so great. Uh, Stardew Valley kept my attention and it was perfect for the Switch because it's portable. You can put it in sleep mode, pick up right where you left off. It's a perfect game because, you know, games like this, you need to do a lot of grinding, a lot of managing of your resources and stuff. I was impressed. I only played very much a little bit of it before I got it on the Switch and I played a lot of it once I got it on the Switch. And it's under 20 bucks. It's one of the best indie games out there. I don't think it's coming out physically on the Switch as of this video, but it is under 20 bucks to download in the eShop and it's a very high quality game. It's, it's one of the best indie games along with all these other ones that I'm mentioning. SteamWorld Dig 2 is a fantastic game on the Switch. I fell in love with SteamWorld Dig 1. I played it on my 3DS, I had such a blast. I literally played that game from start to finish day one and when I got SteamWorld Dig 2 I also played that from start to finish. It's a very charming little game. You play as a character that's in search of the first character from SteamWorld Dig. You go into the mine, you dig, you find items, you upgrade. It has a little bit of a Metroid feel to it because there's certain areas that you can't access until you get certain power-ups and stuff. You uncover the mystery in the your missing friend. Um, you mine stuff, you gain money rinse and repeat but there's just something so fun and relaxing and addicting at the same time with steamworld dig 2. i think it's such a great game i had a lot of fun it's charming graphics are great the humor's there it's a wonderful game i i mean i'm repeating myself but you know when i did my review i went a little bit more in depth i talked about how the just overall going in and trying to see what i could find in those mines mining as much as i can Finding the upgrades and exploring was a big part of it. This is a neat little quirky game. I believe it might be coming physically, but right now it's available in the shop for under 20 bucks. That's the theme, 20 bucks. Now last but not least, Golf Story. This game came out of nowhere for me. You think about it, a golf game? Those really aren't too fun. I mean, the Mario ones are all right, but golf and an RPG. Now this game is kind of like a mishmash of both elements. A little bit of Earthbound here. Charming little quirkiness. Lots of personality. The characters in this game are hilarious. You don't want to miss anything. You don't want to skip over any text. You play as a up-and-coming golfer that has to go through a variety of different levels that are golf courses. You accomplish certain feats, certain tasks. Then you play like the, curse, the course circuit of that level and you move on. You move through the ranks. It's such a I guess a different pace of what I'm used to as far as RPGs go and I thought just the originality of it all for the plot and the story was wonderful. This epitomizes exactly what a creative independent game is. I mean all the games I've listed today are creative 
works of art, but Golf Story was like nothing I ever played before, and it captured my heart, and it was such a beautiful little game, and I guess that's why a lot of people can really relate to Earthbound when they first played it, because it got them. So, Golf Story is my Earthbound, I guess, because I, I wasn't a big fan of Earthbound, didn't really play it growing up, but now that I experienced this game firsthand and really sunk my teeth into it, Golf Story amazed me, and yeah. So the beautiful thing, as I mentioned, each of these games are under 20 bucks. They're available in the eShop. If you just got a Nintendo Switch for Christmas, these are some solid recommendations for you. Because a lot of people think the Switch is just a Zelda machine. I mean, they may be right with that, but there's a ton of games out there under 20 bucks that are just dying to be played, that must be played, and these were 10 of them. So if you have a different list or you don't agree with me, feel free to comment below. And yeah, if you're new to the channel, leave a subscription, comment, like. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next video.